Hello everyone, this is Amit Pal Singh. Welcome to my next video. In this video, I'll be comparing two big data frameworks, Apache Hadoop and Apache Spark. Although we are all aware about this fact that both are the popular tools or frameworks we are having in the big data world. But still, we can compare them on, uh, on some certain parameters. So let's begin guys. We all know that uh, Hadoop uh, is an open source software framework uh, which is meant for processing the big data here guys uh, we are working we are talking about the data which is coming from multiple sources like it's coming from social media from some sensors from some RFID tags right it means the data is in huge quantity that's the reason it has been mentioned here like large-scale processing okay here we are not talking about the data which is in GB or MBs it's beyond that and Hadoop is uh, like uh, is based upon that principle that data will be distributed and it will be computed in parallel in the form of cluster which will be running on commodity hardware commodity hardware meaning is inexpensive hardware cheaper hardware right so this is like little bit information uh, regarding Hadoop and moving forward if you talk about its uh, history we all know that we all know its story that how it got ever like how it got uh, originated uh, it was created by doc cutting in the year 2005 and uh, doc cutting uh, got this idea uh, because uh, the hadoop was inspired or was, or was motivated from the google's research paper on MapReduce because the for a for very first time uh, google's has published its research paper in the year 2004 on MapReduce from where like uh, the hadoop came into existence right because we all know that hadoop is making use of MapReduce behind the scenes and now uh, like uh, if you talk about dog cutting and uh, now he was working with the yahoo at the time when he was when he had developed that and uh, now he's a uh, chief architect of cloudera one of the biggest company in, uh, in a big data who also provide the certifications in the big data field and uh, it was named after the uh, after uh, his uh, son's toy elephant we all know that's 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 the reason that Hadoop has that symbol of elephant okay so this this story we all know guys so um, today uh, like I will be more concerned about their comparison that how we can compare both if we talk about Hadoop we know that it has its own ecosystem um, it has some core components it has some non core components so if we talk about the core components uh, these are the components which we are talking about first we have a SDFS uh, which is a Hadoop distributed file system we all know that uh, it, it's Hadoop owns file system and it can work in parallel with the local file system uh, let's suppose uh, if you are using any machine like Linux or maybe Windows then the Linux or, or Windows will be having its own file system plus you'll be having one, uh, one, uh, one parallel file system which will be running on your machine which will be SDFS and um, uh, then we have a YARN, YARN is nothing but a resource manager uh, it's uh, like a, a one can it's not only meant for Hadoop YARN because we can also make use of YARN for other uh, frameworks as well like uh, it's a kind of a independent uh, like a module of uh, Hadoop which we can also integrate with other uh, tools as well which is uh, for a resource manager or we can say cluster manager then we have a MapReduce that I already have uh, conveyed that it's a processing layer of, uh, of a Hadoop and last we have a Hadoop common which is nothing but a set of some utilities or libraries uh, which are important for Hadoop functioning so these are some of the modules that Hadoop is having and uh, as I've already have stated earlier that these are the core components right uh, which makes up the core of your Hadoop in addition to it we also have a non-core components like Hive Flume, Uzi, HBase, Zookeeper, and many more. So, guys, this this uh, particular uh, snapshot is indicating the uh, kind of a ecosystem for Hadoop, uh, which not only includes the core components, also include other components, which can, uh, which is uh, like based upon Hadoop. We all know that. Let's suppose if we talk about Apache Hive or Apache Flume, it require Hadoop in background because they'll be working on a top of Hadoop right so this is the ecosystem of Hadoop so let's now uh, make a transition from Hadoop to Spark and then later on uh, we'll be comparing both things together afterwards after five years uh, Spark uh, come into existence and uh, it was started as a research project at UC Berkeley uh, in California and uh, in the in the year uh, way back in 2009 so it's been uh, a decade uh, ago that it was originated and uh, it was developed by uh, Am Zaharia and 
his team now M Zaharia is working uh, like in Databricks one of the leading company in the big data and uh, this is how it got uh, got originated and if we talk about Spark's ecosystem we know that Spark has got its own ecosystem and uh, you can see uh, like uh, for structured data we have Spark SQL or data frames so for, uh, for, uh, for uh, near to real time uh, uh, stream processing we are having these streams available then for machine learning we have MLlib available and uh, for graph processing graphics and the Spark core actually we got uh, because we all know that uh, the Spark core nothing but the uh, it's include the all the APIs like we have the uh, Java API we have the Scala API uh, we have a Python because the, Scala, the Spark has got a multi-language support right uh, we can easily integrate with any language uh, which was the one of the concern with the Hadoop that in the Hadoop when it came into existence we were ha having only the choice of Java that we can only work with Java over there right so like uh, the last layer is uh, indicating that how we can run uh, Spark uh, like either we can run Spark on Yarn on Mesos or we can uh, we can uh, we can we can make use of standalone scheduler for it so this is nothing but the ecosystem of this Spark that how it looked like and here also we can easily compare it with the Hadoop like uh, in the case of Hadoop we have uh, Apache Hive available in the case of the uh, Spark we are having data frames available uh, because both works on a on a structured data <coughs> then we uh, if we talk about uh, machine learning in the case of uh, uh, Apache Hadoop we have got the uh, Mahout available in the case of uh, Spark we have uh, MLlib available so like still we can compare both uh, but uh, today I'll be talking about beyond that as well like how we can how they're different and uh, on what are the different common grounds on which uh, they work in a similar fashion guys now this particular snapshot I have taken from the Sparks uh, research paper which we have published uh, uh, way back in I guess uh, one decade ago uh, which I've already have said that Spark came into existence one dec decade ago and in this uh, research paper they have clearly shows that why Spark is, has gained popularity they have shown that the Spark has outplayed Hadoop in the terms of speed in the terms of running time this experiment was uh, conducted uh, with respect to linear regression and you can see that in every iteration you can see that uh, Spark is completely outplaying the Hadoop that's a reason uh, Spark has gained a lot of popularity. So this is one of the reasons that it's uh, it has got uh, like a much faster speed as compared to the Hadoop. Okay. So guys, uh, another uh, very important reason that uh, if we can compare Hadoop and Spark over is the ease of use. You can see, guys, I have taken two examples here. One example uh, is from the uh, word count. Uh, you can see this this snapshot like till this point and it is the snapshot of a word count program which we have wrote in the Java uh, using MapReduce and the last one uh, we have written this program uh, using Spark. You can see that there's a hell lot of, uh, lot of uh, difference available in terms of lines of code like we are, we are using a MapReduce in which we have to define mapper, reducer, driver but in the case of the uh, your Spark, we don't have to uh, make use of this. Uh, so, uh, like it is uh, like quite easy for any developer uh, to make use of. So, another reason why Spark has uh, outplayed uh, Hadoop in terms of ease of use. One thing I want to state here that Spark doesn't came or didn't came at the time to replace Hadoop. Still, Hadoop has got its own significance, right? But but we can say that it's an other or it's an alternative framework we are got we have got now. So, developers have got a choice now to choose uh, among the Hadoop and Spark. Okay guys, so before we end this video, like let's compare them on certain parameters. First is batch processing. Uh, we all know that Hadoop is a, is a pure uh, batch processing framework. Uh, so we can make use of Hadoop when there is no time constraint. Uh, as far as Spark is concerned, Spark has also got, got this capability of batch processing that it can do the path processing what uh, Hadoop uh, have done in the past. Second point is open source. Both the frameworks are open source. Then we have a graph processing. We don't have any module available in the uh, Hadoop ecosystem uh, with the help of which we can perform some graph processing. But uh, in the case of Spark, we have got graphics available. In the case of graphics, we can do graph processing. Then we have a stream processing. Like uh, in the case of Hadoop, uh, it is lacking here because we know that Hadoop is uh, only meant for batch processing. But in the case of Spark, it's available. That's the reason Spark often called as hybrid framework because it has uh, got the support for batch processing as well as the stream processing. Then multi-language support, yeah. 
uh, as I've already stated that in the case of a dupe, like uh, we were having the support of Java, but in the case of the Spark, we are having support of R language, Python, SQL, Scala, right? So we have a multi-language support. That's a reason actually it's a, like a popular choice among the developers. And last is iterative processing. Guys, like Hadoop is not a good tool uh, as far as iterative processing is concerned because Hadoop store its intermediate result in SDFS and getting the data from the SDFS it's a bit costly but in the case of the Spark uh, we, we know that Spark make use of in-memory processing it keeps the data in memory only on the two occasions Spark will be interacting with the secondary storage while loading data and while storing data and in between there will be no interaction with the uh, with the secondary storage which, which makes the Spark quite faster than Hadoop. That's the reason the algorithm like uh, page rank or k-means clustering in that scenarios when we have the some iterative processing which we have to do, which, you have, which we want to perform, we will not be using in that case Hadoop because uh, I've already specified because Hadoop uh, make use of uh, uh, like uh, SDFS for its intermediate uh, storage. So it, it's not a good choice as far as iterative processing is concerned. So I hope guys uh, with this uh, little video I've uh, made you understand in a best or easiest way I can uh, uh, like uh, how both the things are different and on what common grounds they are like giving us the same or uh, like same results or they are they are performing the same task. In case uh, if I if you find uh, something wrong in my statements or if you find that uh, something uh, should be improved, so guys please comment on this video. I'll be waiting for your comments. Thanks for watching. See you next video.